The U.N.'s highest court, the International Court of Justice, is hearing arguments this week from the Palestinian Authority's foreign minister and dozens of other countries about the legality of Israel's 57-year occupation of the West Bank and Gaza. So we thought we would dig into how these borders formed and how they've changed. Well, back in 1967, Israel had been an independent state for about two decades. And before the Six-Day War, Israel controlled this area that you see here in blue. Egypt controlled Gaza. The Golan Heights were part of Syria. Jordan ruled the West Bank and the eastern half of Jerusalem. Palestinians lived on this land but did not formally control any of it at the time. Then, on June 10th, 1967, after six days of war between Israel, Egypt, Syria, and Jordan, those boundaries, as you can see, changed significantly. Israel, victorious in the war, took all of this land including the Sinai Peninsula. They took over control of the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, the eastern part of Jerusalem, as well as the Golan Heights. Now, the UN claims that was unlawful. And when Israel and Egypt normalized relations, you can see Israel returned the Sinai to Egyptian control, and that was in 1979. But it continued to maintain its control over East Jerusalem and the Golan Heights, and that action is at the heart of this week's hearings, along with Israel's military occupation of the West Bank and Gaza. A main point of contention in these areas is the issue of Israeli settlers. There are more than half a million Israeli settlers that live in the West Bank alongside Palestinian residents. That's according to a pro-settlement organization's review of public data. More than 200,000 Israeli settlers reside in East Jerusalem, and more than 20,000 settlers live in unsanctioned zones in East Jerusalem or the West Bank. The UN, for their part, considers all of these settlements illegal because they believe that they violate the Geneva Convention. What part of it? It, it says that a nation cannot move civilians into an area that it occupies during wartime. Now, Israel, for their part, disputes this. They say that the land in the West Bank and East Jerusalem were not formally a part of any Arab nation at the time. And Israel has criticized the International Court of Justice hearing and submitted a written defense of its current military occupation. It doesn't plan to provide oral testimony, and in either case, the judgment will be a non-legally binding advisory opinion, but it can have diplomatic implications.